Why do some people spend $3,600 on a scope for their rifle? Find out today on Precision Rifle Network. Well guys, today we are gonna be talking about the Zero Compromise Optics 5 to 27. And this is a video I've been wanting to make for an awful long time. I just haven't been able to do it because I couldn't afford the scope. Guys, I'm gonna kind of run down the general description, talk a little bit about who it's made for, what it's made for, what it costs and why it costs that much. And then we're gonna kind of get into the weeds on a little bit of sciencey stuff today. Um, I wanna give you some more of the details behind what's going on inside this optic to make it worth $3,600 and to make it what I feel is better than a lot of other scopes on the market. So let's begin with just general description. This is a 5 to 27 in the magnification range, 56 millimeter objective, 36 millimeter main tube, which of course leads to um, 35 mils of elevation adjustment, which is, you know, more than most other scopes on the market. 20 mils of windage adjustment. It's got 10th mil clicks. It does have a zero stop feature. Of course, zero stop is, you know, just a general term that we use um, to describe the, uh, the elevation turret coming back to a hard set zero. Uh, it is um, adjustable from 25 yards to infinity for parallax. Overall length is 15.24 inches. The weight is 37.9 ounces. It does have an illuminated reticle, both red and green, and there's a bunch of illumination features that we're gonna talk about later. This is first or front focal plane, and they also point out it has 92% light transmission, which is important, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later in the sciencey stuff too. So now onto who it's made for and what it's used for. So. If you ask Zero Compromise Optics uh, about their scopes, it's like, you look at their website, there's two scopes on the entire website, right? There's two, only two. There's the 4 to 20 and there's the 5 to 27. And you're like, oh, they just must be a small company, right? They've only got two scopes right now. Where's all the, you know, the, the one, to, 1 to 8s and the, and the 3 to 9s and the 4.5 to 14s? When are the, when are the cheaper ones going to come out? Well, they're not. Uh, you know, sorry to burst your bubble, but... Zero Compromise Optics has no goal whatsoever to make lower end, lower dollar scopes. Their entire mission is to make high end, high dollar scopes for discerning shooters, okay? So they, they don't make the low end, they don't have a plan to, okay? But what you can take away from that is they're doing one thing and they're doing it right, right? There's a quote that I love and it says, it's better to say this one thing I do than these 40 things I dabble in, right? So Zero Compromise is doing one thing. They're making one scope that's almost identical, except for magnification in the 4 to 20 and 5 to 27. And they're doing it at a high, high level, okay? So they're focusing on quality over quantity and different, and different dollar amounts. Um, so this scope is clearly made for the discerning sportsman, hunter, competitor, or sniper, right? Because only a certain type of person is gonna spend $3,600 on an optic. Um, and it's the type of person that wants the best. Because it, when it comes to optics, there is no such thing as just as good. The more money you spend, the nicer thing you get. Mainly because of the glass, but in this, in this case, uh, with the Zero Compromise Optics, it's because of a lot of things that are going into this optic that makes it better and makes it worth $3,600. Some of the scopes you, you, you can buy for, you know, $3,000, $2,500 to $3,000, something like that. And you're wondering like, why in the world is this so expensive? And there may or may not be good reason for that. But for the zero compromise optics, after I've told you everything that goes into this scope, you might consider it worth $3,600. It was to me. Um, another thing you need to know about who it's made for and, and what it's used for is that it was made, um, you know, by Jeff Huber, Nick Gebhardt, both those guys are competitors, long range shooters. Jeff Huber, uh, used to be a main guy at Night Force. Um, so he's got experience, you know, building high end optics. So if you have any, uh, any amount of, you know, respect for the durability and quality of a Night Force, 
um, then, you know, for him to go out on his own and want to make something better than all the things that they were involved in at Night Force, then you should understand that the zero compromise kind of gets put into a class above that. All right, so cost. This scope costs $3,600. The 4 to 20 costs $3,500. To a lot of people, that is, you know, unobtainable. And I understand that. And it really was for me too. Um, the highest price scope that I, that I had ever owned prior to this was a Night Force Attacker. And I got that one used for $2,300. Okay. So, so to me, to go up to a $3,600 scope, I was like, nope, there's no way. I'm just not going to do it. Now, as part of a deal between, um, and I want to be honest about this with you guys, I got a really, really good deal on the Zero Compromise Optics 5-27. to They did not give it for free. I literally asked for it. I asked for it for free, um, and they would not do it, which, you know, that's fine. I have no problem with that. This is, this is not about that. The point is, is that they were, they cut me a pretty good, um, you know, deal, a percentage off uh, of the price of this optic, uh, bringing it down to where I was able to purchase it. And so shout out to them and thanks to them for doing that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to, to buy this scope or uh, bring you this video. So it, it, why it costs so much, it, it really boils down to durability and repeatability, right? I'm going to go into some more of the sciencey stuff, so I'm going to try to make this brief. But early on when this scope came out, there was a, uh, a drop test um, circulating around of a guy uh, dropping his zero compromise optics uh, right on the optic itself, you know, from about six feet off the ground. Um, as I remember, he was dropping it into snow or something like that, but still, who among us would buy a $3,600 optic and then proceed to drop test it? Um, <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Anyway, the durability is there and the repeatability and the scope tracking. Like, um, you know, the scope tracks perfectly from the factory before it leaves. They do it themselves. They, they test for tracking. And if it doesn't track perfectly, uh, it gets it gets recycled. Uh, so so they're great. There's there's absolutely, you know, no reason to doubt the, the durability or the repeatability. And I'm going to get into some of the sciencey stuff. And hopefully after I'm done with that, you'll understand why $3,600 or $3,500. All right. So as we get into the science stuff, guys, please understand, I am not a scientist. I it, it's outside my wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Like I, I operate in a world of theory and generalities. I'm more of an artist than I am uh, <laughs> a detail person. So you have to look at it in those terms. I'm making a video in those terms. I'm trying to give you science stuff, which I know benefits a lot of you because you have those analytical minds. I'm not that guy. And so it's hard for me to, to you know, dip my toe in that world, but I'm going to give it my best shot based on what uh, my interview with Nick Gebhardt over there at Zico. Um, he was able to tell me a lot of this stuff and I'm trying to get these details out for you. So, so bear with me on that. Now the glass, as far as the glass goes, if you're familiar with, um, you know, glass, um, manufacturing at all for scopes, you know, there's two main glass manufacturers in the world. One, the name is, is shot S C H O T T. And the other is Hoya. So one is German, one is, uh, is Japanese. The, the Schott is German, the Hoya is Japanese. Schott is the better of the two, generally speaking. I don't know if you knew this or not, fun little fact, but Schott glass is actually owned by Zeiss. So when it comes to glass, you know, it's, it's like anything else, right? Think, think diamonds. Um, if you've ever picked a diamond for your wife or your girlfriend or something like that, and you go to an actual good diamond store, like not one that you find in the mall, but an actual, uh, you know, jewelry store, they will, they will pull out a little scale on a piece of paper or whatever, a little laminated card, and they'll show you the different levels of diamond clarity. Um, and with each increasing level of clarity in that precious stone, comes a much higher price point, right? That's what you need to think about in terms of glass when it comes to good glass for scopes. So Schott and Hoya make different levels and it's no different here with the zero compromise optics or any other high, high end scope. 
you're paying more money because the glass inside is a higher quality glass. The lenses are clearer with fewer imperfections and better light transmission and all that kind of stuff. So as you get the better stuff, the price goes up. That should be kind of obvious. That's what's happening inside the Zero Compromise Optics is that they have chosen close to, not the high, high end, but they have chosen close to the highest end glass that they could get. You have to look at it from a business perspective, right? If you're trying to make money on an optic, you don't want to pick a chunk of glass that costs the highest amount of money because then all of a sudden, in order to make money on your scope, you've got to charge $5,000 for it or something like that. And that you know narrows the group of people down. So, so Zico is smart in this way in that they picked the absolute best piece of glass that they could get and still be able to price the scope in a range that would um, you know, get them enough sales to make it worthwhile, right? So it's an excellent piece of glass at the end of the day. And another thing you really need to look at when it comes to that is light transmission. So it's a really good piece of glass. The light transmission is 92%. And really, if I could put that into practical terms, the best way to, to test that is at the end of the day, when the light is fading, how does the scope look? Now you see some marketing terms like it's got HD glass. So at the end of the day, it'll give you 30 minutes of extra shooting light or something like that. Well, HD is a marketing term, right? High def is a marketing term that companies use to try to make you think that you're getting something better than just simply coatings on the front of the lens. Zero Compromise Optics doesn't put this coating on, the, on their lens in order to, to get you better light transmission at the end of the day. The glass is just good enough quality that you're getting better light transmission at the end of the day, right? And they're not going to sit there and tell you that you're going to get 15 extra minutes of shooting light or something like that. Now, you're going to get extra shooting light because more light comes through this glass because it's just good glass, okay? But they're not going to put a number on it because that's just a marketing ploy, basically. All right. I want to talk to you about the, the, what they call the dual detent system. All right, guys, I'm going to try to cover this one. This is a hard one to not have any kind of a, a graphic. I wish I had a graphic to show you. I just don't. I'm going to try to describe it the best I can. This is in reference to the, the elevation turret, the, the windage turret, the clicks, how the clicks sound and feel. What's going on inside of most scopes, if you think the tip of a ballpoint pen, okay? And then get yourself a, uh, you know, even just like a like a quarter, you know, the, the milling or, or, or um, I can't remember what the actual term is for the ridges around the edge of a coin. And then take that ballpoint pen and just draw right on the edge of that coin. Now, if you were to do that over and over and over again with the tip of that pen, you would eventually carve um, a line in the side of those ridges, okay? Um, so the way that a zero compromise optic scope is different is that now take that pin, your, your ballpoint pen, turn it on its side to where the side, the round part of the pin is more like a, like a roll pin, and then go across those splines and it's a little bit different. So here's what's happening. The pins roll along like a log, right? From one click to the next. And there are actually dual opposing pins inside of, inside of a, a zero compromise optic. So what it does is it reduces the torque and uh, it gives you a greater um, you know, click feel life expectancy of the clicks and the turrets and all that kind of stuff. I know I'm not <laughs> describing it very well, but again, it's, it's really difficult to try to put that into picture for you, but that's their dual detent system. And, um, and no other scope is, is doing that from my understanding. And, and so that's why the, the zero compromise, you know, the, the turrets feel so good and they're going to have longer life um, than a lot of other scopes because um, engineered it to be, uh, better and uh, to reduce torque and stress in that system. Now let's talk about what they call the center lock system. So a lot of scopes, um, the lenses inside the scope, 
are actually held in place in the center of the tube by screws that come in from the sides. There might be a set of screws, like a system of screws all the way around the lens. Um, and it kind of, it, 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 it free floats that lens in the center of the tube by, by pinning it in there with screws. Well, what can happen on, on lesser expensive, cheaper scopes is that any kind of vibration or a drop test, for example, or, you know, it gets bumped those screws can, over time, they can maybe loosen. Um, they can, they can, they can strip a little bit with vibration. All those kinds of things. And if any of that happens, those lenses can can move inside the scope or completely fall out. Um, I'm not saying that's very common, but what's different with the zero compromise optics and their center lock system is that they have beveled the edge of their lens. Okay. They don't use they don't use screws to hold it in place. the The scope is actually beveled on the edge, and it's seated perfectly into kind of a um, a chassis that holds it in place. And then they bed it into place. So the durability of that lens inside the scope, there's just no way for it to come loose, and that's why it can it it can be you know dropped from six feet up and have no no breakage, no point of impact shift, no anything like that, right? So the center lock system from Zero Compromise Optics is unique. All right guys, so now I'm gonna get into the resolution of the scope. Again, this is, I'm, I'm using this as a reason for why the scope uh, costs so much and why it is um, you know, considered better than others, okay? Um, basically think of this in terms of what can I see through the scope at different distances? What can I resolve? Um, can I see the edges of things better with one scope versus the next? And there's an actual test for this. And what they do is they put a one inch circle that is graduated into 60 arcs or arc seconds. They put it down at 100 yards and it is a measure of the scope's ability to see the detail or the difference between those arcs at 100 yards. And of course, it translates out to farther distances too, but the test is done at 100 yards. All right. And there is something called the Dawes limit. So the way to think about this, at least the way that I was able to kind of get a better picture of it, is if you're looking at a star up in the night sky, there may actually be two stars side by side, but they the light transmission of both stars kind of blur together, right? And all you're really seeing is one star. But if you were able to, to get an optic like a, you know, a telescope or a, a scope of some kind and look through that, at what point with that piece of glass are you able to resolve the difference between the two? You can see clear clearly the edges of both of the stars with space in between. That comes down to the quality of the glass. It's called the Dawes scale or the Dawes limit. There's a bunch of equations and things that goes into it, but what I can understand is um, there's within the within the possibility of perfection, which there's there's nothing perfect on the face of this planet, but as far as we can understand a perfect scope, as far as the Dawes limit is concerned, if you punch the zero compromise optics numbers into the Dawes limit equation, what that boils down to is basically perfection. So the zero compromise optics scope is basically as perfect as they can possibly get on that Dawes limit or Dawes scale. Um, it can't be any better. It's not possible for it to be any better than they've gotten it. So I know that's kind of arbitrary because you're not really seeing it, but go look up the Dawes limit or Dawes scale. Research that for about half a day or a full day like I did. Um, learn a whole bunch of stuff. Punch the numbers of the zero compromise optics scope into the Dawes scale, and, um, and you'll see what I mean when you're talking about resolution. Basically, what you're seeing through the scope uh, of a zero compromise optics 
five to 27 or four to 20 is the absolute best picture that you're going to be able to see through, through a scope. It doesn't get any better than that by the numbers. So that's why 3,600 bucks. Okay. That's why it costs so much. The durability, the repeatability, the fact that they do internal in-house scope tracking tests on machines that are designed to test it perfectly. And if anything isn't right, it gets recycled. Um, all of those things guys work together to, to give you the highest end scope that, that you'll ever have the ability to get right now. I know there, there are tangent thetas, um, that are more expensive. And I know there are March optics that are more expensive. I don't have either of those to test. I don't know any of the details or the information about that. So as far as Joel Wise is concerned and the scopes that I personally know about, the zero compromise optics is the best I've ever seen. Okay. So I can, I can confidently say that now a little bit about the illumination system. The illumination system is fairly unique in the zero compromise optics as well. Okay. Now, yeah, it's got an illuminated reticle, which a lot of scopes do. You can change it from red to green, which a lot of scopes do. Um, what is probably a little bit different in the zero compromise optics, what it's got, what it's got is kind of unique. It, it, it's got a couple of like, um, you know, automatic off or sleep features, which yeah, some other scopes have as well. What makes the, the zero comp unique is that say, for example, you're, you, you lay the rifle down on its side, the illuminated reticle will enter a sleep mode. And then if you pick the rifle back up, the, the illumination turns back on. Same way if you've got the illumination on holding the rifle level and then you point the rifle up into the air or straight down at the ground, the illumination turns off and then back on automatically. And um, there's also there's also feature, which you know, you can make your own case as to why that would be beneficial for you. I just think it's kind of a neat feature. And then it's also got you can go into um, you can go into the optic, you know, and you can um, turn all of those kinds of things off completely. And the reasoning behind that was maybe for a sniper or somebody who, um, you know, needs that illumination just to stay on, uh, you know, all the dang time for, for whatever reason, no matter what angle the scope or, or how it's laid down on its side or, or anything like that. Um, you know, so there's just a lot more thought that has gone into even the smallest little thing like the illumination of the reticle. And the final thing that we really didn't get into before, I'm throwing it in here at the end, um, it's kind of an afterthought for me, but it shouldn't be because it's, it's important to a lot of people. I just, I forgot to throw it in honestly, guys, because it doesn't matter as much to me. <laughs> and that's the reticle. Um, there are some pretty sweet reticle choices from zero compromise optics. Um, it's the MPCT one, two, or three, three is the newest one. Um, I personally chose, and what you've seen in the video so far has been the MPCT one. I just like the clean crosshair kind of a look. I've still got two tenths graduations. It's still, you know, out on the edges. It still is giving me one tenth graduation so I can measure unknown distance type stuff. Um, it's got all that, which I, I like the ability to be able to have just a, a cleaner, clearer picture. I've been an H59 fan for years. So it's not that I just never liked the Christmas tree style reticles or I don't know how to use them or something like that. I've used them. They're fine. I like it. it's no big deal. I've just chosen to go the more the cleaner, you know, the cleaner route. Um, but you can go onto Zero Compromise's uh, website and see all their new options. The MPCT3 is pretty stinking sweet. A lot of thought and effort has gone into the making of that. I feel like a lot more thought that goes into <laughs> uh, reticles uh, at zero comp than, than a lot of companies. Um, just throwing something up there that looks cool and, and there's not a lot of thought. I mean, there's some serious math and engineering that went into this reticle. And I believe Frank Galley has got uh, a video on this scope with the new reticle to where he talks about the new reticle. Uh, so you can maybe check that out too. Guys, uh, I know this has been a longer video. I appreciate you sticking with me. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Please consider supporting through Patreon and tune in again soon for another great video from Precision Rifle Network.